Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'm going to discuss a very, very thorny issue for my side of politics. But it needs saying because there's a right load of misinformation out there that needs a bit of countering. It, re it relates to the covert human intelligence sources criminal conduct bill that the Conservatives have been pushing. They've pushed through now and, uh, you know, they easily had the numbers to get it through. Nothing that Labour could have done against it in practical terms. But the Labour leadership had chosen to abstain on it, generating a fair amount of infighting inside Labour. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So this is, uh, this is a bit obscure, this one. So I need to cover three different areas. So what the bill is exactly. Why it has caused this split inside the Labour Party. And three why it is a spectacular political win for the Conservatives that could not be avoided. It was an absolute guaranteed win for them. So in terms of what the bill is, in the course of their duties, of course, we understand that intelligence services sometimes have to engage in unlawful activity when infiltrating criminal gangs, some of them very, very serious criminal gangs. And some of those unlawful activities can be seen in the national interest as necessary. However, this is where the left-right you know, split in politics comes. Many of us on the left believe that there are some lines that are not worth crossing. Torture, sexual assault, things like that. My view, and it is my view, is that if offences to humanity like this have to be employed, then the society you are trying to save in employing them isn't worth saving. A society has to stand on some moral platform to be worth it. A moral society has boundaries. There, there are lines it will not cross. Now, a lot of people on the right, however, don't see it like that. As far as many are concerned, and I do mean many, not all, a society is worth saving at any cost. The, the, the reason why their society is worth saving is not because of any high standards, but because it's their society. And that's all there is to it. It's that belonging. And they will pay any price to protect it, as long as they don't have to pay the price themselves, of course. They will justify it by saying, well, we're not doing anything that the other side aren't doing. We're only weakening ourselves if we won't resort to the tactics that others are using. That sort of thing. To me... That is not exactly setting yourself up as higher than those you see as your enemy. In fact, it's, it's, it's pulling yourself down. So this bill, which is being called all sorts of things by some on the left in order to hide what it's actually about, including disappointingly Jeremy Corbyn, exists to provide a legal framework for authorising criminal conduct. That's what the bill is for entirely. Now, the bill's main aim is important because currently... There is no adequate legal framework for authorising criminal activity. The way this is being billed by some who are sort of dogpiling on it is this bill allows the intelligence services to commit crimes. It's not quite true. They do that anyway. We know they do that anyway. You know, it, it, it already happens. What this bill does is provide the legal framework to authorise it and... So, because at the moment it happens uh, and it means it's just down to the judgment of those who don't consider themselves to be all that accountable. But it then will be. There will be people accountable for it now with this bill. Now, from my point of view, and certainly the Labour leadership's point of view, it's better that if these things are going to happen anyway, and they are going to happen anyway, they have happened, they are continuing to happen. Anyone would be a fool to say it's not happening right now. It is better that there is at least oversight that someone named will have to authorise these activities because they then put themselves in a, a legal position to be, you know, taken to task later on if they have not acted properly. It makes someone responsible. And it's a heavy burden authorising criminal activity, particularly if it's very serious criminal activity, that you would imagine will make them consider the gravity of the situation. So as the bill was proceeding through the commons, which it's now done, Labour abstained on the second reading. That caused a bit of a, a rupture there. They abstained on the second reading in order to try and get it amended. They wanted it to be amended. It's an important bill. Even a Labour government would have pushed for this bill, but not this bill in its current form. That's important to distinguish there. A bill like this was needed. No one argued against it. 
what we're arguing against is the fact that it allows for certain things that should not be allowed. So on the second reading, some Labour MPs defied the whip and voted against it anyway. Um, now, what this, of course, does is it causes those on the hard left, the wreckers, to not, that's not everyone on the hard left, but you know the ones who actively just want to fight with the Labour Party, to scream for Starmer to resign as leader. And I have I've not looked, of course, because I'm doing this ahead of time, but I've no doubt the same thing is happening on, on social media today as well, as they always do. The way they are framing the argument is that the, the Labour leadership, Keir Starmer, is supporting or at least failing to oppose a bill that attacks human rights. Now, that is misrepresenting the bill. Most people, the vast majority of people dogpiling on this, I will bet you have never read the bill. Never read it. It's not even that long. Some who have read it are simply lying as well about what it says. Like I said, the bill itself doesn't have enough protections. That's why Labour abstained in order to try and amend it. However, the amendments failed. It was a low chance of success, let's be fair. This isn't the sort of thing you're going to build cross-party consensus on. Conservatives aren't, as a breed, all that bothered about human rights. I mean, we've got con current crop of Conservative MPs who are even talking about leaving the European Convention of Human Rights. I mean, that's, that's where we are right now. The idea that they would give a hoot about human rights for this bill is laughable. It had a very, very low chance of seeing success, those amendments. Um, you know, we've seen their attitude to human rights anyway in the, their conduct during the pandemic. So the bill was up for its third reading yesterday and final vote, of course, before going off to the House of Lords. The Labour leadership couldn't support it in its current form. So you can't vote for it because in, in actual fact, the bill could be used to authorise human rights abuses. But as it's better than what we have now, where those human rights abuses happen anyway, but in much more secret circumstances, so it's much harder to actually bring anyone to account, well, it's better than nothing. So they didn't want to oppose it either. And there's another reason for that, which I'll come to. So they called for abstentions rather than voting against it. So the situation is as follows. Right now, we know that our intelligence services break the law, sometimes in a pretty bad way. Sometimes it's justified and sometimes it is not. Campaigns for justice when it is not are hampered very severely by the lack of availability of information because after all, these events do not officially take place. How is even a court supposed to obtain information from intelligence services who by their nature act in secrecy on something that does not officially even occur? So the bill could in theory be used to abuse human rights and let the agents of that abuse be free from prosecution. And I've no doubt that this will happen if the Conservatives are in power for long enough. But it happens right now anyway. And with the bill, at least someone will be legally obliged to justify it. After all, the bill doesn't allow someone to authorise it on a whim. It's not simply a case of someone signing a docket and that makes it all right. There are actually safeguards in the bill. They're just not as explicit as they need to be. Then there's the final difficulty for Labour. So right now, there are a number of campaigns designed to tackle some pretty awful abuses of this nature on the part of British intelligence services. The government have promised that the bill will not be used retroactively to scupper those campaigns. In other words, the bill will only apply from the date in which it comes into force. So any law breaking that's happened in the past was still law breaking and can still be pursued. That's what the government have promised. Yeah. yeah. Who really trusts this government to keep their word? That is the problem. And it is largely for this reason that quite a few Labour MPs on the left of the party have chosen to vote against it. But here is why it is a huge political win for the Conservatives. So I was in two minds, Omen and Arin, for the third vote because it... I could see the reason for abstaining for the second vote. It was absolutely stupid to vote against it on the second vote. Stupid. Does nothing. And the third vote, yeah, absolutely. And I was of the view that I was thinking, yeah, I, I think I would oppose it myself on the third reading. But here's, Labour were completely trapped on it. Completely trapped. And nothing they could do about it either. There was no amount of political footwork that's going to get you out of this. If Starmer had whipped his MPs to vote against it, it would satisfy those on the left. 
They'd give him no credit for it. They never do. But he'd be savaged in public. <sighs> Labour don't care about national security, is what the Conservatives would say. You know, they're, they're on the side of the terrorists, of the child rapists, of the criminal gangs, of the sex traders. And that is exactly the sort of thing that would, would completely derail Labour's campaign in 2024. One of the reasons Corbyn couldn't get enough support in the public is because they fundamentally did not trust him on national security issues. They did not believe he bats for Britain. He's not seen as British, but as, you know, as a citizen of the world, which is a lovely statement. It's a lovely idea for a hippie, but not so much for a national leader who needs to, def who needs to stand up for their country and for their country above all others. The Conservatives would have fashioned a huge stick to beat Labour with. But if Labour abstained as they chose to, then the Conservatives also know that the left will defy the whip and you create a new round of infighting inside the Labour Party, wasting valuable energy that would be used and better used against the Conservatives. As a vocal chunk of the Labour Party spends more time, as usual, fighting against Labour than against the Conservatives. In addition, the Conservatives still get to beat Labour with the national security stick, albeit a slightly smaller stick, because the Conservatives have already been saying, look at that, there's Labour MPs there voted to weaken our intelligence forces in the work to protect our national security. It was a win-win for the Tories and a lose-lose for Labour. There was no action that Labour could have taken that would not have knackered them for the next general election. This is a political hit. What the leadership have basically chosen to do is to take a smaller political hit in the public, but a much bigger one inside their own party. Now, I will finish off by saying I'm not at this point, it might look like I'm here going to the, to the Labour MPs that have, uh, have voted against it. You bloody fools, you fall into the Tories trap. That's not what I'm actually saying. I don't actually blame any of the Labour MPs for defying the whip over this one. Like I said, I may even have done it myself. I'm not an MP. I don't have to make a definitive judgment as to what I would have done in that situation. It is a genuinely tricky one. The bill does improve the current situation. That in itself is reason enough not to oppose it. But the bill can also be used to authorise human rights abuses. Serious ones in theory. Doesn't mean to say it would happen, but in theory it could. And well, with the government we've got, who's betting against it? I do not trust the current government to recognise a few moral boundaries without legal ones underpinning them. They don't always, uh, you know, recognise legal boundaries, let's be honest. But I can also appreciate just how damaging it would be in public to have formally opposed the bill. In order to win power, Labour have to convince the electorate that they have a list of certain competencies. The one right at the top of the list is national security. Rightly or wrongly, that is a top priority for people. There it is. It's going to be another messy in-party fight with the vast majority of people involved in it, not having bothered to even read what they're arguing about. But there are genuinely held beliefs as well on both sides. It is what it is. But my overriding view is this. I do not like what the bill could be used for. But everything that it could be used for happens right now anyway. Opposing it doesn't stop that. Even if we had the votes to, to sink the bill, that wouldn't stop it. So how do we change it to get the benefits of oversight with the surety that it won't be abused? Not a difficult question. We get into power. So we take the course of action that reduces the ability of the Conservatives to try and claim that Labour would not be strong on national security issues. That's all there is to it. When Labour get into power, they can then amend the bill. It'd be nice if people could remember that Keir Starmer is actually a human rights lawyer. He's even worked for free for people who couldn't afford to pay. Maybe, just maybe, people might actually realise that of all Labour MPs, and I mean all Labour MPs, his commitment to human rights is proven without doubt. But that may be a vain hope. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.